Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And today we are talking about these new war leagues that are built in to Clash of Clans. Um, you guys have probably seen lots of sneak peeks leading up to the update, and then now here they are. Uh, your clan's likely participating in them as well. So uh, I'm not going to talk too much about them. I'll just kind of give a basic overview. But the main point of this video is to talk about some tips. How do you want to change maybe your base building, your attacking, your overall coordination with attacks? Because this is a very different strategy, a very different type of war. There's only one attack. That's the main difference. Um, so there is one attack for each base, assuming everything gets done properly. And that changes things a lot. So there's going to be some tips in this video I think you guys might not have considered before, so be sure to stick around to the end. Um, but this is basically it, guys, a brief overview for the less enlightened. Um, I think it's each month they have these seven war uh, just weeks. So it's basically back to back to back. Um, you can see this one's already completed. Then we're in battle day for the second one. And as you're in battle day for one, the next one you're in prep day for. So that way it is literally just one day for each war because the prep day takes place um, it coincides coincides with the battle day of the previous war. Um, the season info, you're with seven other clans, and it's just who gets the most stars. So it's kind of like if you guys know, um, I think it's like the Premier League in Europe for uh, soccer or football, as they call it. Um, so I think that has an element where it's not based on wins, but it's based on total like goals for. It's the same concept here. It's not the wins, but it's the stars you get total. So every war, you get a certain number of stars, and it just adds up. These are 15 v 15 wars. Uh, you can spin with whatever breakdown you want, and you can swap people in and out as um, as you go about. Um, so that's very cool stuff there. We're going to go ahead and um, take a look at some replays, and I'll start kind of going through some of my tips for how to make sure your clan succeeds. Um, let's hop back to our first war here and take a look at the uh, the replay. Um, the one I want to show from this number nine is a nice attack. Um, here we go. Agent. Um, so... Of course, you want to attack every base, ideally. Um, like I said, there's only one attack. You have 15 attacks for 15 bases. So the simplest thing is attack every base. Um, that should be pretty obvious. Now, you want to start with the easiest bases. It's not any different than a war, a typical war, where you have two attacks per player. And you might be wondering, well, if everyone has one, a ba you know, one base each, why does it matter when you attack what order? Well, the, the thing is, if someone disconnects or if someone just completely flops on like one of the top bases, then you get to a situation where it's like, okay, or on a bottom base actually is more important for this example. You get a situation where it's like, okay, now we have, I mean, you know, you get zero stars. Now you're going to have a base left up with zero stars because you either attack that base again and then don't attack a, another base or... Um, you, you attack all the bases and you just leave that one with like zero stars if someone disconnects. So you want in that case to be able to leave up like the highest base, the base that you otherwise might only get like one or two stars on. Don't have your clanmate in the last like hour of war disconnect attacking the bottom base that you know is an easy triple for like anyone in the clan. So there are some exceptions. I know it's, you know, it's tough to coordinate these wars. They're back to back. Um, people have time restraints, but generally speaking, do your best to start low and then kind of work your way up on the bases and start attacking those those uh, later bases, um, the higher bases later on. Um, along that line, make sure that your lineup is airtight. You want to make sure everyone in the, the lineup is willing to attack, is going to attack, is has a decent Wi-Fi connection. They're not using a tin can as their Wi-Fi router. Um, you got to really make sure that uh, your clan is is really with it because missing one attack hurts so much, especially as you start to get higher up, assuming your clan's very active. Um, clans get better as you get up to higher leagues month after month, so keep that in mind. Make sure you have a good lineup. Swap people out between wars as needed. Now, when you're attacking, you dips are going to be more preferred and safer because 
the thing is you have to secure a two star on the bases typically we're talking like 10 v 10 11 v 11 12 v 12 if you're attacking in the same town hall level as you or really any attack in general you should be securing the two star before you try any possible three star attempts um, we're going to move over to this next war here we have going on so because of that it's a little more restrained um, in terms of three starring so to give an example to make this clearer, if you're a Town Hall 10 and you're going to be attacking a base, maybe you have a good plan for it, but you can't run it how you want it to because you have to make sure you get the Town Hall as well. So in order to make sure you secure the 2-star, you might have a, a, a worse chance of getting the 3-star, which is why dips are better, they're more reliable. That way you know you're going to get 3-stars on the base and you trade that 2-star um, by like a Town Hall 10 hitting a Town Hall 11. So it's safer if you're going against a clan that you know you can beat doing that way, go ahead and do it for sure. Now, if you have to take more risks, uh, if the clan's good, if they have better Town Hall levels, then you're gonna have to go straight up some 10v10, some 11v11. But if you do, make sure that you uh, secure the two star no matter what. That should always be done, um, but err towards dipping a little more. If you have a hybrid clan with different Town Hall levels, don't get crazy and have 12s dip 10s, but dipping one town hall level down and then having the lower town hall levels hit up um, will typically be a better bet, especially if people leave their town halls on the outside. You can potentially have like a, a town hall like 8 hit a town hall 11 or something, depending on what level your clan is and stuff. Um, for base building now, this brings up a, a very interesting thing that I kind of thought about recently, and I think we might see clans do this is don't leave that town hall way towards the outside like you used to if you're a town hall 10 or a town hall 11 or something especially if you're like one of the upper town hall levels maybe you have a lighter clan with like nines and eights or something um, don't just throw your town hall way to the outside because look at that tornado trap go on those balloons uh, it doesn't do much but it's kind of fun to watch we're just seeing some early gameplay of it um, but anyway you, if someone can put down one goblin or one wizard and take out your town hall, you're making it too easy because then they can, you know, three star attempt your base and they won't even have to worry about getting the two star. But if you put your town hall still on the outside, still making it difficult for wall wrecker and battle blimp pathing, whichever side that is. Um, but at the same time, if you put it up against the wall with some archer towers on it, now you're forcing someone to either work um, a two star into the attack by having a kill squad go through there, which is somewhat unlikely because typically people bring the kill squad opposite the town hall to get that wall wrecker value, or you're forcing them to use like a baby dragon or some, some troops to kind of take that out separate from the actual attack. So I would say um, it's worth it to maybe your base is giving up a little more with the wall wrecker angles by having the town hall tighter to the base um, in, a, a little bit it's going to get, maybe make it a little easier to three star I guess if you're looking at it from that perspective but it's definitely worth it to make the town hall not, not just like a freebie on the outside um, at town hall 12 you should already have your town hall on the inside I hope you know that um, but if you're a town hall 10, town hall 11 and it's all relative if you're one of the upper town hall levels in your clan uh, be sure to do that even a town hall 10 who's in a clan with like 11s and 12s you're probably going to get hit by a town hall 10 in some cases so keep that in mind you might want to keep that town hall tucked close to to make it difficult um, as you get to the high level top of your clan town hall 12s town hall 11s think about some anti two stars um, you might be able to bait some triple attempts and have them fail for a one star it's all about kind of seeing the clan you're facing getting a feel for for kind of their skill level and how safe are you gonna have to be or how risky are you going to have to be in order to beat them? If you're going up against a clan that has a significant town hall advantage, then you're going to have to take some risks, go for some straight up three stars, 12v12, 11v11. Um, you can't really hit up for a three star, but you can at least secure two stars where you can't get three stars. So with that all in mind, um, just play to your opponent. That's the main, the main uh, message of this video. So I hope this, uh, this video was helpful. Maybe you guys got a new perspective on uh, some of your wars. I'm excited to see how this whole thing is going to play out. Um, One Hive Genesis is doing uh, like a lot of 11s and 12s and down in Alpha we have some 10s working. Uh, so it's just we're kind of balancing it out. 
Now, the only thing I don't like is it's almost like Clash Royale in that the the way it works at all town hall levels, clans of all levels are in the same pool. So of course it's going to be clans with like all max town hall twelves that are going to start to fill up the top tiers. Um, somewhat independent of skill level. I mean, skill will still separate those clans among themselves, but they have an inherent in advantage by having just all maxed bases. So I, I wish there was a way that um, it might be it might be too hard to implement. But if you could have you know the best twelves, the best tens, the best elevens, you know, just have it like a straight one town hall level. That'd be an interesting subdivision of these these leagues. I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of clans participating, so maybe a thought for the future, but I still have to see how this all plays out. Um, we haven't even like populated the, the top leagues anyway, so thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys later. Bisectatron out.